Hi there, I'm Dr. Nate Story from Bright Agritech, and this is Aquaponics Academy, episode number 17. Today we're going to talk about iron and aquaponic systems. Welcome to Aquaponics Academy, a Bright Agrotech podcast designed to help you overcome common aquaponic issues, learn new growing techniques, and help you be as successful as you can be as an aquaponic practitioner. Whether you're just getting started or you've been growing aquaponically for decades, this podcast is for anyone wanting to design the best performing system possible. Join aquaponics expert, Dr. Nate Story, the creator of Zip Grow Towers, as he breaks down complex topics into easy to understand information. And now, here's Dr. Nate Story. Today we're going to talk about iron and aquaponic systems. We decided to give iron its own episode because it's a pretty complex nutrient. Now, I'm not going to dig in as deeply as I have in some of the other media we've produced over the years. So if you have questions at the end of this podcast, I'd recommend you go and you watch the YouTube video that I did on iron. It's a really useful video, and it basically walks you through soluble and insoluble iron. That's ferrous and ferric iron. And it teaches uh, kind of the difference between the two and why it's important to understand the differences if you're trying to run and manage manage a really good aquaponic system. So let's start talking about iron. Iron is a really important nutrient and it's one of the most commonly deficient nutrients in aquaponic systems. And the reason for this is that there's not typically enough plant available iron in the system. Now, even if there's a lot of iron in the system, a very small amount of it is typically plant available because iron is only available for plants to take up in one form. And that is in ferrous as ferrous iron. So this is essentially a form of iron that exists typically in low pH conditions, typically in anaerobic conditions. And if you know most aquaponic systems, they're not typically really low pH and they're typically highly aerobic as opposed to anaerobic. In aerobic environments, we have ferric iron most of the time, right? So most of the iron is ferric. That means it's more oxidized. And when the iron is more oxidized, it essentially means that the plants have a much more difficult time to take that iron up. So this is problematic, and a lot of our plants have deficiencies. Now, iron is really important because it's one of the key components in a lot of plant growth and metabolism, specifically photosynthesis. There are lots of little biochemical things that are entirely built around iron. And plants use iron in many of the same ways that other organisms, including people, use iron. So it's, it's a really, really important thing for plants uh, to have. So uh, the fact that we're working with systems that we want to be aerobic and that are typically not, you know, at a pH of, at a pH of three or four means that we're already dealing with a system that tends to have oxidized iron, that is iron that isn't available to the plants. Now when iron oxidizes, it precipitates out. So when it's, when it's unoxidized, uh, when it's reduced, you have iron that is soluble, right? It will dissolve in the solution, and if it's soluble, it's floating around, and the plants can actually take it up. But if it is not, if it is oxidized, it forms a solid, and it sinks or collects on the sides of your tanks. It's just basically not available. Now, this happens in soil environments, too. And over the years, plants have gotten really good at doing things like uh, developing uh, these compounds called siderophores. Siderophores are plant compounds. They're usually uh, carbohydrates of some kind, and the plants basically have these amino groups and carbohydrate attached amino groups that they leak out into the soil and those float around. And they find this, you know, iron that is freshly uh, reduced before it can be oxidized, or they uh, will actually reduce oxidized iron and um, make it soluble. So it will float around, it will find this iron that's usually, you know, combined with another element and formed a solid. And these siderophores will essentially allow that iron to dissolve back into the solution, even if the pH is high, and even if it's really aerobic. And this is totally amazing. A lot of people have been looking into siderophores for growing certain crops in certain environments, and especially in environments where the soil pH is very high, and where iron is not always available available. So um, this is really cool area of research. The nice thing for us as aquaponics growers is that we can do this artificially with chelated iron, okay? So chelated iron is a special type of iron. It's an iron fertilizer. And what they've done is they've taken a chelating agent and they've used it to keep iron soluble and keep it plant available. 
So the chelating agent, when you look at the package, it will say Fe, which is, of course, the symbol for iron, right? If you're looking at uh, your periodic table of elements, uh, to find iron, you're going to look for the capital F and lowercase e, and it describes iron. And you're going to see then basically a bunch of letters behind that. It's either EDDHA or DTPA or EDTA. So all of these different letters, they describe different forms of chelated iron. The main three are FE, EDTA, FE, DTPA, and FE, EDDHA. And um, they are all unique in their own ways. FeEDTA is a form of chelated iron that is typically available at lower pH values. So it's also a little bit phytotoxic. So it's kind of one of these uh, forms of iron that you probably don't want to use in your aquaponic system, but it's really, really cheap. And so a lot of folks will use it in a hydroponic system, and a lot of folks will use it in other agricultural applications because it is really inexpensive, and it does a great job of chelating iron in kind of higher pH ranges. Now, when you get down into like the low sevens, it becomes less and less effective. That means it functions more poorly at keeping that iron soluble at those higher pH values. So as your pH rises, FEEDTA becomes less effective. Now that's fine in a hydro system when you're running your pH at like 5.5, five, something like that. But in most aquaponic systems, you can't run your pH that low. So if you're going to be running your pH, say above uh, 6.5, something like that, then you need to be either using FEDTPA or FEEDDHA. And those are the other two. Now, FEEDDHA is some of the best chelated iron out there. It functions at a really broad pH range and it works really, really well, but it will stain your water red. So if you don't mind Kool-Aid, it's not hurting your fish. It's not going to bother anything, but it kind of makes your water look like Kool-Aid. So if you don't want the Kool-Aid, then you're pretty much stuck with FEDTPA. It's really non-toxic. It's really great stuff, but it usually has a slightly lower iron concentration. So you have to add more by weight. So FEDTPA is usually around 7% iron. And uh, while FEEDTA is typically closer to 13 and FEEDDHA is, you know, somewhere between those two. So knowing that percentage iron is really important because that actually tells you how much iron that chelated iron is delivering to your plant. And this is important to know because you want to be dosing your system at about 2 milligrams of iron per liter. That is two parts per million iron. And you want to be dosing at that between two to three weeks. Most folks go every three weeks or so. Now, um, I'm not going to get too much into the math because trying to describe to you how to do the math to dose your system at the right rate is kind of tough to do in a podcast like this. But I go through it in one of our YouTube videos. So just uh, Google Bright Agrotech YouTube Iron in aquaponics, and you'll see two videos come up. The first one just kind of explains the dynamics of iron in aquaponic systems, and the second one explains how to dose your system correctly with chelated iron. So definitely check out that second video. So that's kind of the, the skinny on iron in aquaponics. The big points are use FEDTPA if you can, or FEEDDHA for almost all systems out there. And you're going to have to do a little math to figure out how to dose it. Now, you can use some sensors. You can use some equipment that allows you to measure iron in your system. But in my opinion, it's still a little bit unreliable, and it's hard to get a good read. You can dose your system up to around five parts per million if you want, and it's not going to bug anything. It's not going to bother your fish. It's not going to bother your plants. But really, most of what we do is based on what Dr. Ricosi did down at UVI, and he kind of established this standard for iron at two parts per million every three weeks. So um, for us, this means we add several ounces of iron to our system on a three-week interval, and we almost never, ever, ever see iron deficiency. Actually, I can't remember the last time we saw iron deficiency. You'll know you're seeing iron deficiency. Most iron deficiency manifests as intervenal chlorosis. So this is uh, yellowing between the plant veins. Now, if the veins themselves are yellowing as well, you're talking nitrogen at that point. But um, you know, most people will see iron deficiency at some point during their aquaponic career, especially if they're not aggressively dosing their system with a chelated iron of some kind. So um, check out that YouTube video or check out the blog post on the subject to learn how to do the math. It is not as hard and as scary as it sounds, but it does take a little bit of, of uh, sitting down with a piece of paper and a calculator and uh, just going through the numbers. Once you have the right number, you can continually dose on schedule at that rate, and your system is going to be really, really healthy as a result. So make sure, you, uh, make sure you do that. Sit down, go through the math, and uh, figure out how to dose your system correctly. It will definitely, definitely, definitely help you have a healthy 
and, uh, you know, nutritionally sound system. Nothing is more frustrating than having deficiencies, and especially when there's several dis- deficiencies conspiring against you at the same time. It can be a really, really frustrating experience. So um, sit down, do the math, and make sure iron at least is not one of the problems you're dealing with in your system. So the other thing to keep in mind with iron is that iron is always entering your system, but iron is always leaving your system in the form of plants, in the form of fish, and in the form of essentially insoluble products. Now, they may become soluble eventually, but in most aquatic environments and aquaponic systems with a lot of oxygen, it's not that likely. So you always have to add iron in excess of what your plants are actually using. So keep it in mind, and it's worth finding a good supplier for chelated iron. We typically get ours from uh, a place called Kelp for Less, or at Ace Hardware. Uh, There are lots of places where you can get FEDTPA, and that's typically what we use in our systems. We really like it. We're really happy with it. It's super non-toxic, and it's really safe for your system. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for iron. Uh, it, it could be beefier, it could be a little bit meatier, but then I would be sitting here trying to describe mathematical equations to you over the radio, which I do not think is probably how you want to spend your afternoon or your evening or whenever you're listening to this. So I'll leave it off here, and if you have more questions, definitely check out the blog post, check out the videos we've done on the subject, because those go into a lot more detail. And this is a subject that you should be versed on if you're an aquaponic grower. So definitely check those out. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode of Aquaponics Academy. We hope you're finding these podcasts helpful in understanding the details, the nitty gritty, the nuts and bolts of how systems work and how to maintain them in a really, really productive and efficient way. Um, On behalf of everyone here at Bright Agrotech, we really hope that you're going to stay tuned for more useful aquaponics tips and techniques in the future episodes. Next time, we're going to be going through the rest of the micronutrients as well as phosphorus. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to kind of dig into some of these other nutrients that no one really talks about in aquaponic systems. And uh, hopefully, you'll learn something new. So check it out and uh, stay tuned for the next episode. And thanks so much for listening.